Hi, Eric Lenask here at the IT Expo in Miami. We're here in Miami Beach, Florida. And I have on the program today, Zane Long from Beyond. <laughs> Zane, thank you for joining me. Glad to be here, thank you. Uh, now that we got through the name issue. <laughs> um, so you were telling me uh, off camera some of the C exciting things um, that Beyond's been doing, especially with regards to uh, uh, some of his partnerships and relationships. That's right. Uh, I've been at CBON now for almost two years and uh, came on board at CBON really to make a change in their indirect channel. Um, and, and we've done that, uh, particularly in the last six months. Uh, we've done some recruiting efforts that have brought in uh, partners uh, like CDW, Insight, Westcon, uh, just to name a few. Uh, and particularly because CBON has made a change, a significant change in their product uh, uh, development and product launches, uh, including our what we call our total cloud data center, our infrastructure as a service play, and also a hosted PBX uh, product that we call total cloud phone system. And primarily on the back of those two products is what has interested those particular companies in partnering with CBeyond. Uh, so it's, it's thrilling for us, obviously, to have those kind of partners, and it gives us uh, an opportunity to really expand uh, like never before. Those aren't no-name brands that you mentioned. Um, you know, what does that mean uh, for CBeyond to have relationships, to have been able to uh, uh, embark on those relationships? Well, what it means is it, it, it first of all, gives us a lot of recognition. Right? And, and, mm -hmm. and other partners are on the cusp, which I'm not at liberty to talk about, but they're also as big or bigger than some I just mentioned. So that's exciting. Um, uh, but what it really does is it, it, it empowers this, uh, this, these products I just mentioned. It allows us the opportunity to scale like never before. You know, CBON's background, we did this through our direct sales force, and we had 700 direct salespeople at one time, uh, down to 350 now as we change the, the shape of CBON and where we're headed. Now, what specifically, you mentioned uh, two of your products. What specifically about those products is, is interesting companies like CDW? Well, it, it gives them the opportunity to have uh, a, a product uh, line and one that they can count on uh, to deliver. And so our infrastructure as a service play uh, is very robust. Uh, in fact, uh, a, a gentleman that uh, was part of the uh, Savas architecture, their Symphony platform, mm -hmm. now works for CBeyond, a gentleman named Chris Ortballs. And having him on board in the development of that uh, program, the due diligence that the CDWs and Insights and Westcon did by comparing some of our competitors, uh, they came to the conclusion that CBeyond was the right choice for them to partner with, and so we have. Are there still uh, questions, uh, there have been for, for a few years, that uh, uh, around the adoption of cloud and what you can do with the cloud, and, and more importantly, should you, uh, should you do something with the cloud? And, and I think that you know some of those questions uh, for customers in particular, it's, it's why we, what we do kind of like a, a beachhead. Mm -hmm. you, you, when you're engaging with customers and you're talking about something as sensitive as their data and moving it away from a physicality into a virtual environment, mm -hmm. that can be very frightening. Uh, but what we offer is an opportunity for customers to come in uh, as, as part of our total cloud data center into an environment where they don't have to move everything at once. In fact, most of the customers that we've signed have moved a portion of that, testing it and realizing the security and the cost savings that it provides. You mentioned security. That's something that is always going to be a concern. It has to always be a concern. How do you address that? Well, uh, we have, first of all, a SOC 2 compliant data center. Uh, so it's at the highest of the auditing uh, uh, pinnacle. Uh, and uh, you know, through that process, we can demonstrate the security of our cloud data center. Uh, you, you, when you, when you, we have a video on YouTube that you, if you're interested in seeing another data center, but this one is pretty special because it's state of the art. I mean, they even have the, the pylons that pop up outside the building when there's any kind of threat so that a tank couldn't get through. But you know, the, the, it's a newer facility and it is state of the art. Uh, that in itself is a security and, and certainly the redundancy that comes with being in a state of the art facility that we, put, that we have uh, gives customers uh, the confidence in, in, in recognizing that we're going to take care of their data. We also provide a service, it's a, what we call a white glove service, it's a remote migration service, which migrates all that data for them completely uh, from a physical environment into the, the virtual environment. But as I said, we understand how customers can be sensitive to that data, and, uh, and we, wanna de we demonstrate to them by, by moving pieces and portions of it. Once they get comfortable with what we're able to do, uh, then we, we obviously have an opportunity to sell more. What about TCO, over the long haul? 
Uh, is there a question over whether something virtualized or cloud is going to be the better alternative? Well, I, you know, I think you know, take a you take a look at your iPhone. I, you know, it's interesting. I'd never lost an iPhone. I'd never lost a phone in 20 years, and I recently lost my iPhone. And though I was not happy about it, uh, I kind of shrugged, and I it's like, okay. Um, I'm going to go buy another one, and I'm going to push a button, and all of my data comes back to my iPhone, including the settings, even the brightness setting, and everything. The vol all the every setting was was completely back in play. You know, th that is amazing to me. I, I don't have to I don't have to be concerned about the, the the physical device, other than the fact I had to pay for a new one. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to be concerned about the data that was inside that device. I know that's taking it down to a very simple level, but you know, to me, that's meaningful. Um, and when you also uh, apply the costs of power, uh, the costs of infrastructure and replacing servers and the IT costs, now we're getting to the point, because of course you'll hear here at this show, you know, costs for cloud services are declining, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, where there was that comparison between the physical and the virtual maybe 12 months ago, maybe it's equal or maybe, maybe a little more costly to go virtual, that's changing and it's going to continue to change. It's going to get more expensive to have the physical rather than the virtual. Well, it's interesting. Based on what you've just said, uh, TCO is uh, about a lot more than just the dollars and cents. Uh, there's the convenience, there's uh, ease of use, there's uh, ease of recouping data, there's the old backup and, and redundancy and, and uh, uh, security elements. So uh, there's a lot more that goes into it. So when you ask the question, well, is the TCO there? Is the ROI there? It's an awful lot that goes into that question. Yeah, and we're we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate that going back to the partners and how we're working with them. Uh, we're we're changing the way that we're working with partners. Uh, it's not a it's nothing new. Cisco's been doing it for I think what 92 years, uh, but it's a it's a channel integration that we're gonna deploy uh, through a group of uh, su subject matter experts that we have hired over the last 12 months. We, we call those uh, folks uh, cloud sales managers, and they have come from, and we've recruited them from companies like Rackspace, Aerofusion, Terramark, Savvis, and the like. Uh, they now work for us. There's 25 of those individuals. Those 25 individuals will be our subject matter experts to work with the partners I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the number of customers uh, that reside in some of these entities I've just mentioned, and when you couple that with the number of salespeople, like CDW has 2,000 salespeople, Insight has 600 inside salespeople, and I think right now about 200 outside salespeople. Uh, those folks uh, are not going to be able to, to understand our total cloud data center uh, to the point where they would have the success in talking and presenting to customers. So what we're going to do is continue to train them through what we call our Cloud Academy. We actually do road shows where we do a deep dive, eight hour Cloud Academy training session uh, using the Microsoft offices, which is Microsoft, a big partner of CBON. Um, and that's been a great success. We had over 400 partners attend that uh, eight events last year. But in addition to that, we're going to use these subject matter experts to in fact go and sell on behalf of the partners, to take their customer base, take the leads that they have, uh, not take them off the focus of what they may be doing at this very moment, but to begin a process of getting cloud services into their customer base, we believe this is the right way to go. Excellent. Well, and certainly judging from the partnerships that you've already mentioned, uh, uh, hopefully the ones that you alluded to are, are <laughs> soon to come as well, that uh, the model seems to be working. Zane, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.